Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is I'm from Arizona State University and I'll present our paper Delegated Private Set Intersection Cardinality and its application to contact tracing. Uh, this is a joint work with Kai from Google and Hugh from Telecom Party. So I'll start with an overview of contact tracing, uh, which is an application for our PSICR, the current solutions of contact tracing and its limitation. Uh, later, I will go more detail how we can handle privacy concern and how to improve our contact tracing performance. Uh, so, you know, uh, contact tracing is to find out all individual that an infected person has been in contact with. And we want to do it because we would like to stop the disease spread. So how is uh, contact tracing done? Uh, it can do manually by interview the patients. So you can know where and when they have been. So this solution has privacy concerns and expensive to scale. In this paper, we focus on mobile contact tracing. The phone application can detect all possible nearby contacts. However, it must be privacy sensitive, uh, must be high scalable, especially on the user device, and requires less false positive or negative threat. So most current contact tracing approaches are based on Bluetooth and work as follows. Uh, when Alice and Bob are closed in six weeks, Bob use a CIS to generate and broadcast a random uh, token. So you can see here the number one, two, and three. <coughs> and Alice save all the nearby uh, random tokens to her phone. A few days later, Bob is positive with disease. He uploads all the CIS that used uh, for his uh, random token. So the server can, can see number one, two, three. And now Alex downloads all the diagnosis uh, random tokens on the CIS uh, from the server and check the posters. So uh, the users broadcast and save a random numbers. So it looks like that uh, the personal information never shared or collected. Uh, but it's not always true. Uh, there are several uh, problems, include uh, security issues, uh, for example, the link attack or replace attack. The current solution is not scalable for the end user device, and they have at the highest uh, false positive or negative threat. So in this, this talk, uh, we focus on the linkage attack and we want to so address this problem. And we will also want to improve the performance of the contact tracing, especially on the user device. So, I will present the detail of security issue here. So you know, because all the infected tokens are publicly available. So when doing the comparisons, Alice can learn which tokens might be infected. So he can see she can see the token number one, two, three is an infected token. And then she can infer when and where and from whom she received this token. And then can I re identify both? So, for example, uh, Alex put an Uber at noon and received this token at that time. So she can infer the infected status of the Bob, the, of the Alex, the Uber driver. And actually, uh, Apple and Google solution stall uh, these tokens at the OS level, but it still have some privacy issues. So 
So moreover, an attacker can install the Bluetooth sleeping device to different known physical locations and then collect the random token. So it is possible for the attacker to keep track when and where they receive it with token. And the attacker can do that to learn the travel route of the individuals. So this picture is the real attack of Apple and Google solution. So beside the security issue, there is a performance problem, especially on the end user device. So they call that the user need to download the token on the seed of all infected users. So for 32,000 new daily infections, the DP3 approach requires 450 megabytes downloading the tokens. And Google and Apple approach requires only 7 megabytes downloading the seeds, but they need 66 million AES operations to generate the token. So clearly that you need a good phone to do the contact tracing. So in the rest of my talk, uh, I will present our solution to prevent the linkic attack uh, using private matching, uh, private set intercession cardinality, PSICR. And we also show how to improve the performance of contact tracing with the outsourcing protocol. So I'll start with the linkic attack. The main reason of this attack is that the, all the infected tokens are publicly available and therefore known by the attacker. So previous uh, work uh, proposed a simple solution to address this problem. The main idea is to allow Alex to check his uh, exposure status without knowing all the infected tokens and they use uh, PSICR for this. So PSICR is a two-party protocol where the server has a set of X and Alice has a set of Y. And Alice learns the size of the intersections and nothing else. So by doing so, Alice doesn't know which token is infected. So she can infer both infected started. However, this solution uh, is heavy on public key operation and requires exponentiation for each item. Therefore, it's inefficient when the set size is large. And uh, here is the uh, contact tracing system uh, and they have several uh, uh, systems here and you can see that they either expensive on the running time or the communication cost. So uh, for the poor phone, uh, can we outsource the contact tracing computation to the cloud? So I will go to our delegated PSICR protocol and with our delegated contact tracing system. So along with that, we introduce the new crypto tool, which we call uh, our previous distributed key PAF. So a simple solution to for delegated contact tracing system is that uh, we introduce another closed servers and Alice outsources her receiving token to that server who the server, this is the cloud server and the backend server runs PSICR and then returns the outbook to Alice. However, this solution uh, reveals the Alice travel history to the cloud server because the cloud server knows all the non-infected uh, 
فقد So in our paper, we propose a delegated contact tracing system where Alice can distribute her receiving token to several cloud servers using secret sharing. So it means that the sum of the value here equal to the tokens. So you can see number one, two, three can be the sum of number 100, 20, and three. Now, cloud servers and the backend servers run secure computations. And Alice is the person to get an output whether there is a match. Uh, the secure computation here is delegated PSICR. So, input Alice has Y, the set of Y, the backend server has a set of X and the cloud server with no input and alice learns the size of the intersection and nothing else so this paper proposed the first delegated psicr protocol uh, before going to the protocol uh, i would like to present Oblivious PIF functionality and is the definition of our new OPF. So the traditional OPF, uh, we have one sender and one receiver. And the sender with the, the key K, the receiver input, uh, the value Y and receive FKY. So you can think, Hash of uh, y to the k, the half function of y to the k is the OPF. So clearly, a property is that if x equal to y, then fkx equal to fky. We introduce a new crypto term, which we call oblivious distributed key PF. So instead of having one receiver now we have many receivers the sender have the same key as before but the keys is distributed so we for the first re the, uh, receiver if he inputs y1 he will receive fk1 y1 similarly uh, the last receiver's uh, input, YN, will receive FKN, YN. And we have the property that if X equal to sum of the YI, then FK of X equal to sum of the FKI, YI. So you can think like the value Y is also distributed. And another important property is that if we have the combiner who can collect all the OPF value, FKI, YI, the combiner can reconstruct FKY by sum of all FKI, YI. And the combiner learn nothing about FYI or the value Y. So given that functionality, uh, we go into our delegated PSICR protocol. So the main idea is that uh, Alice distributes her token to cloud servers. So say Alice has a number Y1 and Y2. If cloud server have the share of Y1 and the share of Y2. And then this cloud server run ODK PF with the backend server. So the backend server have the uh, key K and the cloud uh, server receive FK Y. So you can see that uh, the for Y1, the, the cloud server receive FK1, Y11. 
And now we introduce a combiner who can combine all the OPS value here. And he can compute FKY1 and FKY2, right? And because the backend server have the key, the backend server can compute all OPF values on his set. So he can compute FKX1, FKXN. And now what we want is that if the combiner have, uh, have the two, the same OPF values. Uh, so for example, if the combiner have y1 equal to some fi, then the combiner will receive the secret values of the backend servers. And otherwise, this is the random value. And then somehow, if Alice knew, knows all the secret value here, Alice can do the comparison between the secret values and then see whether they is a match. So we use the polynomial to implement this step. So concretely, the server interpolate the polynomials on the OPF values and the secret value. So this is the uh, polynomial go through the OPF values f k x i and the secret value s i and then the server sends and the coefficient to uh, the combiner the combiner evaluates the polynomial on the OPF value so clearly if x equal to y then you have OPF value i equal so the combiner can learn uh, the secret value. And otherwise, uh, this, uh, the OPF value here is random. So the polynomial on the random values is the random value. And now uh, the combiner sends all the uh, X, Y to Alex and she needs to set it in the sub order so that Alex doesn't know which one is in the intersection. Similarly, uh, the backend server sent all the set of secret value to Alex and now Alex can compute the uh, intersection of X, Y and S, X. So to reduce uh, the communication costs, uh, you can see here we uh, the set size of the secret value proportional to the, the set size of the backend server. But uh, the secret value can be a random. So we, re we can reduce the communication cost here by using PIC. And we also use the hash zooming scheme uh, to reduce the cost. So please see the paper for more detail. So by interrupting our dedicated PSICL to contact tracing systems, uh, we, ha we have the lowest communication cost and fast in the running time because our system, uh, in our system, the user can outsource all the computation to the clouds. And we also can prevent the linked attack. We also benchmark uh, the performance of uh, end, user, end user device. So for 4,000 uh, tokens, the server only require, the user only require a few milliseconds to do uh, delegated PSICR protocol. And it's required only few, like 200 uh, kilobytes per second. 
this is a very very reasonable reasonable cost uh, for the phone and for the cloud server it takes about uh, a few minutes uh, to do the contact uh, to do the psicr or contact tracing uh, on the very large uh, set size so uh, and this is the for single threading so if you have multiple threading then the cost uh, the running time can be reduced to uh, some seconds yeah thank you for listening and you can see uh, the talk on e and the, the demo of our implementation on GitHub.